This video is for you and me too. And whether or not you're a dog person, this video is gonna do something to you and for you. And if you're a dog person, you're gonna find a lot of value in my story that may help you when you're looking for your next best dog. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is Surviving Duck Season. I was never a dog person until I went on a duck hunt with a guy who had a retriever. And in just a few short hours, I was trying to work it out in my head how I could have one of those. And within a year, I had my own yellow lab puppy. That's been 30 years now. Since that time, I've always had a dog in my home, sometimes two or three. Yes, I've had many dogs in my life, but the loss of Indy was different. It really hit us hard. It's been very difficult for me to make this video two years, but I owe it to her. She was six and a half years old in the prime of her life, energetic and healthy as far as we knew. But then one day she barely ate her food. I didn't think a whole lot about it, but then the next day it was the same. When I went and took a bumper out to throw it for her, she wouldn't even go after it, which has never happened. So I checked her out, couldn't find anything obvious, and so I decided to take her to the vet. Well, I didn't have an appointment, so they asked me to just leave her there for a few hours and they'd check her out. Well, a little while later, I got a call from the doctor telling me that Indy was in kidney failure. I asked, well, is there anything that can be done? She said at her age, it was possible that they could get her kidneys going again, but they needed to find out why they were failing. They performed many tests over several days and everything came back negative. They gave her an IV to replenish her fluids with the hopes of her kidneys starting to work again. The odds were not high, but there was a chance. We spent lots of time with Indy each day at the hospital. She really seemed fine. She loved on us, wagged her tail, and even barked. She just wasn't eating, and her kidneys weren't doing their job. Our sweet daughter prayed for Indy every day, and as the days went on, her emaciated body just kept looking worse and worse. After eight days of running tests and doing everything that they could, the doctor told me that they were just simply out of things to try. There was nothing else to be done. My wife and I now face one of the toughest decisions. There was only one right thing to do. My wife and I were with her in her final moments. In December of 2014, I'd been talking to my wife about getting a puppy. I knew that Jazzy would be retiring from hunting soon, so it was time to get a new pup. My wife was so enthusiastic about helping look now, my wife was not really a dog person, but she'd always had a knack for researching and finding stuff. Honestly, I wasn't very optimistic about her finding anything. To humor her, I threw out things like FCAFC, NAFC, MH, you know, things like that about the pedigree. Well, that evening she came back with two litters to look at, and both looked absolutely fantastic. But the one I was most excited about was sired by the 2012 National Amateur Field Champion, Traveler. And he was sired by the 2011 National Amateur Field Champion, Grady. The litter's pedigree was most impressive with dozens of field champions, national field champions, Hall of Fame dogs. So I called Matthew Marks, who owned the litter, and the mom named Molly. She's a master hunter hunt test dog. And she also had quite a pedigree as well. So we decided to buy a pup and name her Indy. Now the name comes from my background as an independent producer. Our productions are often referred to as Indies. But I'm also a believer about the power of a name. I wanted my dog to be independent, be different from the pack. So our independent blockbuster lived up to her name. We created her handle on social media, Indy the Yellow Dog. Obviously, she's a yellow lab, but the name is a double entendre. Often a breeder will put different colored collars on a puppy so they can tell the difference between them. Ours was the yellow dog. That's the story behind the name. 
Indy arrived on my wife's birthday in January. And a few days later, my friends Terry Denman and Mike Morgan from Mojo TV came hunting with us. And they got a little footage of my new pup. <laughs> Who can resist a cute puppy? <laughs> That's my girl. All right. While it was still duck season, I gave her opportunities to be around ducks and feathers and also started her on obedience training. And then when duck season was over, I got started with basic retrieving. Early on, we recognized Indy being very photogenic. She was a real natural in front of the camera. We took every opportunity to get lots of pictures and video throughout her life. And that's something we're extremely grateful to have. When she was about six months old, I took her to Chris Aiken, who's been my trainer since 2002, over 20 years. He and Brett Copeland, who works with Chris, trained Indy over the next couple of years. And she went on her very first duck hunt when she was just a few days shy of her first birthday and did really well. Her first retrieve was a speckled belly goose. As a full-time guide, the expectation that I have for a hunting retriever is really far beyond what the average duck hunter wants or needs. A dog that can make multiple retrieves in a volley quickly and efficiently, picking up 40 or 50 birds a day, and being able to routinely handle out to 250 yards and sometimes further. Hunting seven days a week for the entire duck season. A dog that's versatile to hunt in a variety of habitats and different types of blinds. Riding in boats, side-by-sides, ATVs, and a dog that's comfortable to hunt in something new and not get wigged out by it. That's the kind of dog that I need. And that was Indy. Now in six duck seasons, she picked up thousands of ducks and geese, maybe a dozen bands. Here. Here. Okay. Good. What do you say about that? Should I tell him? Should I tell him? No, don't tell him. Oh my gosh, really? Is that the last one? The last one. Ah! <laughs> I could tell you so many stories of all the remarkable retrieves, but this one is one that I'll never forget. On the last Saturday afternoon of the season a couple of years ago, we were buddy hunting with several friends. I'm still kind of in guide mode. Normally I let everybody else shoot or maybe let them shoot first. But this one lone mallard duck was flying out low in front of us coming towards us, but obviously he wasn't going to come in. He was just going to go like this over the left side of the blind where I was. And my buddy Matt, who's sitting next to me, says, Shoot that duck, Joel. So I grabbed my gun and leaned out the end of the blind and shot. Well, I hit the duck just a little bit far back and he started going down. Well, the blind was set on this high levee and so you couldn't see behind you because the levee was so high. So I jumped out real quick, looked around and saw the duck was going down. So I hollered for Indy to go. So she took off up the levee over the top and out of sight into the field behind me. So I jumped up, ran to the top of the levee to watch what was going on. And it was one of the most impressive chases that I have ever seen. And it was a muddy bean field behind us and the duck was sitting way out there on the mud and Indy started running right toward the bird. Well, just about the time she got to the bird, the bird got, got some life in him and started running. And then he was, you know, flapping his wings and started to kind of come off the ground a little bit. And she grabbed the bird, just barely grabbed the butt of the duck. And then she tripped over herself and lost the bird. Well, the bird, again, is trying to get away, flopping around a little bit, takes off flying and she's running after it. And there she goes, I mean, running hard, 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 just right, just literally a foot or so, uh, right behind the duck. And then she leaps out and grabs the bird and gets a hold of it. And by this time, I know she'd gone another 200 yards probably, uh, but she got the bird and started bringing it back to me. And I was like hooting and hollering, of course, the whole time, you know, like I was cheering at a football game. I mean, it was pretty funny. And all the guys were down in the blind. I could hear them laughing at me because they, they probably just thought it was ridiculous. But anyway, as she started bringing the birds back, I told her, I told the guy, I said, man, I wish you guys could have seen that. That was so cool. And so I walked back into the blind. She comes over the levee and comes into the blind with me. And on the bird's leg was a shiny band. And it was like the perfect ending to one of the most incredible retrieves I'd ever seen that dog make. 
Indy and I were a team. She knew the duck hunting game. She knew to look for ducks in the air, watch for crippled ducks that went down, and so she'd go for them first. And when I stepped out of the blind to help her on a duck, we worked together. It was fantastic. Not only did she make things easier for me, but she made hunting much more enjoyable. You hear guys say that you only get one great dog in a lifetime. I definitely do not believe that. It's all about choices. Every dog that I've hunted with has been incredible. Each one better than the one before. The bond between a person and their dog is like no other, but the bond between a person and their hunting dog, well, it's a whole other level. We know that our four-footed hunting buddies don't live forever. Death happens. As an older dog advances in age, we expect that, even though we dread the day. We even understand that accidents happen to dogs of any age. But what we never expect is a young dog or a dog in the prime of their life to suddenly succumb to an illness when they were otherwise in tip-top shape. Indy was a special dog, sweet, energetic, fast as grease lightning, and a great hunter. She brought so much joy to our family and the people who came hunting with us from all over the world. In her six and a half years with us, Indy experienced more than most dogs would in 10 lifetimes. She traveled with us to many states and Canada. She hunted in nearly every type of habitat you can imagine, retrieving thousands of birds. She appeared in music videos, television shows, and was the star of many of my surviving duck season videos. Even though I got to hunt Indy, she was definitely my wife's dog. Ebony loved Indy so much. Around home, she was calm and gentle. You hear guys talk about the dog that can switch that thing off and on. Well, Indy had one of those switches. And she was quite remarkable with our daughter Hadley, especially as a newborn. Hadley just adored Indy, and we thought that they would grow up together. In her last days with us, we thought that Hadley didn't know what was happening, but she understood more than we thought she did, even though she was only two. Is she gone? Mm -hmm. Oh no, she's gone. Is she in heaven? Yeah. When she's in heaven, she's better. That's right. Can you want me to hear? Indy had a big life, and we're so grateful to God for the time we had. We love you, Indy. Thanks for making us so proud of you, and we'll never forget you. Rest easy, pretty girl. I learned a lot from Indy. I've learned a lot about me and my family throughout her life and in her last days. In the last two years since she passed, I've done a lot of thinking about her and the impact that dogs make on our lives, and I'm so blessed to have shared life with her and so grateful to God for that. So it's very ironic that today being Indy's birthday that I'm picking up a dog today. I'm going to Texas to meet a friend of mine, Jason Craig, who is a dog trainer, a dog breeder, and he's been kind enough to let me borrow one of his backup dogs for hunting season. Uh, this isn't something that you typically can do uh, just anywhere, and it takes really, really great friends to be able to pull this one off, but Jason and I have been friends for quite a long time, and when he learned uh, of Indy's passing, uh, he asked me, well, what are you gonna do when it comes to hunting season? I said, I have no idea. He said, well, if you can't come up with anything, I mean, I'd love to, to help you out, so just let me know. And so, turns out, that's what we're doing. Her name is Zoe, and she's four and a half years old. Little did I know how much that dog would impact me and my family. Jason Craig and his wife, Alicia, own Dark Timber Kennels. Now, I've known them for about 14 or 15 years. I've been very impressed with their dogs and training philosophy. Their business is quite a bit different than the average retriever trainer. They only train dogs that they raise, and they begin the training process when they're only a few weeks old, which is very appealing to me. I decided a few years ago that I wanted my next dog to come from them. A yellow female was what I was after, but Jason doesn't have anything available, so he's got me on the list. Now, Zoe hadn't hunted much, but had all the training. 
She was a little rough at first, but within a few weeks, she was doing incredible. And by the end of the season, I could certainly say she was the best dog I ever hunted. She was most impressive in her handling and really long retrieves. In that season, she performed at least a dozen blind retrieves over 400 yards and two of them over 700 yards. What? Yeah, 722 and 714. After seeing her make a couple of really long retrieves, I started taking my rangefinder with me on every hunt just to see the distance. Pretty remarkable. But right after the season in February, we took Zoe back to Jason. Zoe is one of their mama dogs and she'd be coming into heat soon. And when we arrived, Jason presented us with a yellow female puppy. He said, let's get her in training and if she does what we want, she'll be your new dog. So we agreed and the plan was set into motion. We were really excited. Then in the summer, we took a trip back out to Texas to see the yellow dog's progress. And she was doing pretty well. Then about five or six weeks later, Jason called me and said, Joel, this is not your dog. I know what you're looking for. She's gonna make someone a great dog someday, but you need more. And just like that, we're back to the drawing board. Now he did tell me that if I wanted Zoe back to hunt with for the next duck season, I'd be welcome to her. So that's what we did. And over the course of the next several months, we had another great season. Then one day when I was speaking with Jason, he asked me if I wanted to just keep Zoe. He said, I'd like another litter from her, but after that, my wife loved the idea. We agreed we wanted Zoe, but we had one more ask of Jason. And that was, could we breed Zoe with Chris Aiken's dog, Finn, which is a phenomenally great yellow male. The odds would be on our favor for yellows in the litter because Zoe is yellow factored. Then we could have a puppy out of Zoe. So Jason agreed and now the breeding has happened. So in July, Zoe whelps her litter of pups Jason and Alicia begin training the entire litter, and by Christmas, we'll be choosing which yellow female will be ours. Training will go on for the entire litter, and by next October of 2024, we'll have a fully trained, fully handling hunting retriever, just in time for hunting season. And then the next step is I'd like to have the dog run hunt tests and get titled, but Jason doesn't offer that. You can't do everything. But Chris Aiken happens to be one of the top trainers and handlers in the country in the hunt test circuit and SRS. So as soon as hunting season is complete, I take my new pup to Chris who will run her through the hunt test circuit and earn her grand hunting retriever champion title. I'm really excited because we'll have a pup from Zoe and from Finn trained by Zoe's trainer and by Finn's trainer. Pretty cool stuff, right? I'm also gonna be buying Zoe from Jason, which we are thrilled about. So I'll get to continue hunting her. Soon, I'll have mother and daughter continuing my legacy of great hunting retrievers and always being able to say, this is the best dog I've ever hunted. Dogs make a lasting impact on our lives if we let them, and we should. Whether it's your retriever or your family or friends, never take for granted that you'll get to hunt with them again or you'll get to hunt that special spot again together. Cherish the time you have in the moment and take lots of pictures, making sure you take the time to get them right because they're a snapshot of a memory that will make you smile again someday. Indy. All right, Indy, good. Here, okay. Indy. Good, look at that beautiful pintail here. All right. Beautiful.
Watch my social media for updates on the puppies, and I'll be sharing with you more detailed content here on Surviving Duck Season. God bless you. I'm Joel Strickland, and I'll see you on the next video.